Oh my friends, welcome to Dennis Simplifies. In today's video, we are going to go through the Cholesky decomposition. So sit back, relax, and let's simplify. Solve the matrix A x equals b with the Cholesky decomposition method. Alright friends, so from this question, we can deduce that a x is equal to b from the matrix A, X, and then B. Now, what is this whole Cholesky decomposition? Now, with the Cholesky de decomposition, it deals with symmetric matrices. So we are going to have a symmetric matrix called R. Now, one, one way I used to remember myself, I used to remind myself what the Cholesky is all about is that I changed the name from Cholesky to Choresky, right? So I know that I'm dealing with an R. So let's do some scaring here. So the derivation is done by three by three matrix, but could be generated. A equals R T R, where R is the upper triangular matrix, and then R T is the transpose of that upper triangular matrix R. So we have our A, we have our R T, and we have an R. So just as we're dealing with the L U decomposition, we will have a lower triangular matrix and an upper triangular matrix. So with the Choresky decomposition, we are going to have our R to be the upper triangular matrix for the Choresky, right? And then the RT is going to be our lower triangular matrix. So always remember that. Use the R as Choresky, right? So that you know that it is dealing with the R. And then the R is the main thing, our upper triangular matrix. And then the RT, which is the transpose of the R, will be our lower triangular matrix. So now, let's convert the R to its transpose. You can see from here that we only have our upper and lower triangular matrices, but we don't have the transpose of the R. So let's transpose the R. So down here, we have our matrix A, then we have the transpose of the R and then the R itself. So how is this the transpose? If you look from our R here, we have R11, R12, R13, R22, R23, and then R33. So to transpose it, we are going to send the R12 to where the R21 is, right? So we get R11 and then R12 here, you see? And then to transpose again, we are going to send the R13 where the R31 is. So we bring it down here to transpose it. Then lastly, we take where the R23 is and bring it where the R32 is, you see? It? And then for the diagonal, we don't change it. The diagonal, the main diagonal remains the same. So R11, R22, R33 remain where they are. So we have got our transpose for the R matrix we had. So for our lower and upper triangular matrix, we got our transpose from the upper triangular matrix, which is R. So now that we have our RT, which is the transpose of the R matrix, now we can multiply them just as we did for the Doolittle and then the Crowds method. So we are going to multiply these two matrices, which is a 3 by 3 matrix. So we have our A to be 25, 50, negative 5, 15, 15, 18, 0, negative 5, 0, and then 11. So to multiply, notice what you're going to have. So how did I get this whole thing over here? This is how we do our multiplication. I'm going to take this R11 and multiply it by everything in the first column. So you can see R11 squared, R11, R12, R11, R13. So I multiply it by everything in the first column. Then I'll take the 0. Multiply by everything in the second column here, and I'll get zero. Take the next zero, multiply by everything in the third column, and I'm going to get zero for all the values. Then I add them. So when I add them, finally, I'm going to get my first column, which is R11 squared, R12, R12, R11, R12, R11, and R13. <laughs> all right. So now I'll go to the next one. I'll take the R12. Multiply by everything in the first column, and as you can see over here, so in this case, when it gets to where the R12 is, I'm going to get R12 squared. And the first one will be R11, R12. And here I'll get R12, R13. Then I'll come here and take the next one, R22. Multiply by everything in the first column. So I'm going to get here to be 0. And I'm going to get R22 squared, as you can see here. Then I'm going to get R23, R22 over here. Then lastly, I'll take the 0 and multiply by everything in the third column. So 0, 0, and then times the R33, I'll get another 0. So when I sum everything or when I add everything, I'm going to get my second column. Then lastly, I'm going to take the R13, multiply by everything in the first column here. And as you can see here, I'll get my values. And then for the last part, I'll get R13 squared. 
right? Then I'm going to take this R23 and multiply by everything in the second column. And I'm going to get the first one to be zero. Here I'll get R22, R32, sorry, R22, R23. Then here I'm going to get R23 squared, right? Then lastly, I'll take the R33, multiply everything in the third column here. So I'll get zero here, zero here, and lastly, I'll get R33 squared. All right, so now that we have our results, what we are going to do next is that we are going to compare our results to our, our, our results here to their corresponding elements or their positional corresponding elements in the matrix A. What I mean is that I'll take this R11 squared and then compare it to its positional corresponding value, which is 25 over here. So this R11 squared corresponds or it is equal to the 25. So from this, I can know the value for R11 to be 5. So when I get the 5, I'll go, in, I'll go back to this formula, and wherever I see R11, I'll put the value 5 over there. So I'll put value 5 here and then also over there. Then I'll move to the next one, R11, R12. Since I know R11 to be 5, and I know this whole thing here corresponds to 15 in the A matrix, I am going to find the value for R12. And then when I find the value for R12, which is going to be 3, I'll go and look for where all the places where R12 is and then put the value 3 over there. Then I'll move to the next one, R11, R13. Since I know R11, I can find R13. And I also know that this whole thing here corresponds to negative 5 in the A matrix. So when I do that, I can find R13 to be negative 1. Now that I know that R13 is negative 1, I'll go to the matrix here. And then look for, look for all the places where R13 is and then put the negative 1 over there. Then next, I'll come down here to the R11, R12. Now, this is irrelevant to me because I've already found values for R11 and then R12. So, I'll move to the next one. R12 squared plus R22 squared. Since I don't know the value for R22 and I know the value for R12, I'll compare this thing, everything over here to its corresponding value in the A matrix, which is 18. And then when I get the 18, I can now find the value for R22, which is going to be 3. Then I'm going to do this for all the values and find all of them. Anytime I find them, I'll go to the matrix and put the values over there. Now, if you're able to do this right, you're going to get the final R value to be this, and then the transpose to be this one. All right. So this is if you did it right, you're going to get these values for your R and then your RT matrix. Now, remember, we are not here to find R and then RT for the Cholesky, or let's say the Choreski, right? Because it is R. What we are here to do is to find the values of x, that is x1, x2, and then x3. So remember the, the formulas we were using before, ax is equal to b, and then a is equal to the lower triangular matrix times the upper triangular matrix. And since we know a to be lu, we can say that lu x equals b. And if we take ux to be equal to y, then we can say that ly is equal to b. So look at it again, ax is equal to b, if you say a is equal to lu, then LUX will be equal to B. If you take the UX to be equal to Y, then we can see that LY is equal to B. So since we know the lower triangular matrix, which in this case is RT, remember RT is the lower triangular matrix because it has its trivial values at the lower side and the zeros on top. So it is the lower triangular matrix. So that we know for L, which is RT, and we know the values for B over here from the question. That means we can find the values of Y. So if you find the values for y, then we can go one level up and see that we have ux is equal to y. Since we know for the u, which is the upper triangular matrix r, and we now know the values for y, then we can find for x, which the question is demanding. All right, so now let's do that. So I'll take ly equals b, which, which in this case is rty equals b. Now if you look at it this way, we have more zeros on top, so we're going to solve it by the forward substitution method. Right, so the lower triangular matrix is RTY is equal to B. Now we can find B from here, so we can find Y. From here, we can know that Y1 is equal to what? 35. Sorry, we know that we are going to have 5Y1 is equal to 35, right? Then we get Y1 to be Y1 to be 7, right? Then next we come here and see 3Y1, and we know Y1 to be 7 plus 3Y2 equals or plus 0 equals 33. Now we know that y1 is 7, so we can find for y2 to be 4, right? 30, 12 over 3, 12. So let's take, let's take it from here. So we can have the 3y1 plus 3y2 equals 33, and then y2 to be 4. 
Alas, we get minus 7y1 plus y2 plus 3y3 equals 6. We know for y1 and we know for y2. So you put the values in and we find y3 to be 3. So now that we know the values for y, we can use that to find the values of x since we know for u. We know the u is the upper triangular matrix R. So let's do that. So these are upper triangular matrix and these are the x values and here we have our y values. So we are going to solve this one by the back substitution method because we have more zeros down here, right? So it is easier to solve it from the bottom, right? So the back substitution method. So from here, we can know that 3x3 is equal to 3. So we can find the value of x to be 1. Then we go one level up. 3x2 plus x3. We know x3 to be 1 equals 4. So we can find for x2. And we find x2 to be also 1. So let's take it from there. Then lastly, we have 5x1 plus 3x2 minus 1 or minus x3, which we know to be 1, equals 7. And when we do our calculation, we get x1 to be also 1. So the values for x are all going to be 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1. That means they are ones throughout, right? Alright, so always remember that the Cholesky goes with the R and then it's transpose. So to remind yourself, you just call it Choreski, so that you know that it is the R1, the R, and then H transpose. So the R, and when they do little, the le, le, little has the L, having the ones running through the else, else diagonal. And then the crowd has the U, having the ones running through its main diagonal. And then for this one, which is the Choreski, it is now called the Choreski, because it has the R times the R transpose. All right, friends. That's it for this video. Don't forget to ask your questions in the comment section. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, a party.